This part right here is so important. This part right here I'm about to do is so vitally important. This is what's going to cause you to not to lose discovery calls, to lose clients. Listen up carefully. If you're on your phone, you're distracted. Listen up. I cannot stress this enough. This is this could explain a lot of reasons of why your sales call, your discovery calls don't go well or you send them the proposal and they don't say anything back to you. What's going on YouTube? It's Aaron here. So in this video, I'm just going to do a breakdown of a live discovery call that uh, I did and recorded. And I'm just going to tell you guys what worked, what didn't work and um, overall like the strategies behind it and some sales tactics that I actually did, why I did them and stuff like that. Pretty much this is going to just be breaking down the uh, parts of a successful discovery call, what you should do, what you should not do. Um, cause there's one big thing I did towards the end of this that I did that I really wish I kind of didn't, but it still went well overall. So yeah, uh, if you want more of these, if you're going to, if you like this video, be sure to leave a like on this video and also hit the subscribe button as well. Um, that way, you know, that way I know that you guys like this content so I can keep doing stuff like this. So with the discovery, so obviously I'm using a script, uh, that I made. A lot of people have been asking me, oh, when is the script going to be available? Um, I'm not sure yet. I still need to spruce it up and make it look cleaner. Like as you can see, there's like a error here and whatever, but um, it will be available uh, soonish eventually. It's most likely going to be something that you get if you book a one-on-one -on -one time with me. And with that one-on-one -on -one time, you get all your questions answered about how to build your SMA, get results for clients, or whatever you're asking, how to stay motivated, what to act, what what to do to actually get clients, etc., etc., and then I also make sure that you leave with a step-by-step -step roadmap of what exactly you need to do in order to get clients. Because honestly, when I was first starting out, I wish I had something like that. So I want to give that back to you guys. So if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one time with me, there will be a link in the description below for that. So overall, this discovery call is with a roofer, and uh, yeah, it went well. Um, I actually just sent in the proposal today, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, but overall it went well. This is, I would consider this one a successful discovery call. So let's get into the breakdown. Hey, Alan, how are you? I'm good, awesome. So do you have 15 minutes right now so we can talk where I can tell you, I can ask you a couple questions of where you are now, where you wanna be and see if we can help you uh, get to your goal? Okay, so the purpose of this first sentence is, pretty much I ask him, do you have 15 minutes first? And this is because I want to make sure he has, you know, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes for a discovery call. And I don't want anything to interfere with that. Or like if he has another obligation or he's doing something else, I don't want to get cut off because of that. Because of what a lot of business owners, even though you had a scheduled date and time with them, something might come up where you only have five minutes to actually talk. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have to you say your spiel, you say your pitch. And then, you know, no one likes being pitched, even if the business owner tells you to pitch him. So overall, it just does not work in your favor. So pretty much I asked, do you have 15 minutes? In order to make sure that nothing's in the way and that he can be calm, relaxed, and not have to worry about anything to, uh, that comes up, and I can ask him all the right questions and lead him to the right way so that way he gets excited to actually start working with me. And then the second part of the first, of the first paragraph, um, see where you are now and then see where you want to be. Um, that's pretty much the point of you know sales and like marketing for the most part You want to get people from where they are now to where they want to be So the fact that I'm saying I'm gonna ask you questions to see if I can actually do that It puts me in a position of power being like okay if I think I can help you I, I can tell you the future steps if I don't if I don't think I can help you Then you know we can go our separate ways So it's pretty much saying like I don't know if we're gonna work together and you know, it's I'm not. It's pretty much I'm not being easy. I'm not gonna like bend, uh, bend heads over knees backwards just to see if I can get him as a client. If I truly feel that I can't help him, I'll be like, I don't think I can help you. Let's go our separate ways. So yeah. So this is pretty much why I say this first part. All right, awesome. And also, you're gonna see that I skip some parts of the script. Um, that's because sometimes it's a bit repetitive. Like you can see back here, I I say it again, like, oh, if as you can see down here, I have something, since I respect your time and schedule, do you have anything in your schedule that could possibly cut into this time? He pretty much sounded confident. He pretty much sounded like, you know, you can go ahead. You know, I don't want to have to keep asking the same question over and over again since you already said yes to that. So I only ask this if they sound like they're busy or they're doing something 
And then usually business owners like that because they, they, it shows that you're respectful of them and that like, you know, you're not in a rush to do anything. So it also puts you in a position of power. And that part of the script is so like if they don't actually have 15 minutes, how I redirect it so that we can book another scheduled date in time where they do have 15 minutes. Some research on you guys um, a little bit beforehand. I've seen you've been in business for 20 years, so congrats on that. Overall, why did you start uh, your roofing company? Okay, so this part here, um, the research I did was I literally went on his website and then I saw how many years he was in business and then, you know, boom, that's my research. But business owners like if you do research on them because, it, you know, it makes them feel good about themselves. Like, oh, this guy did research on me. You know, I must he must be serious. He must feel pretty good about himself. And I also do like a pretty small compliment, like, oh, good for you for being in business in 20 years. You know, you don't want to bend over backwards and like, oh, you're the best business owner ever. That's such a huge, amazing accomplishment. You know, you must be like the messiah or something like that. You don't want to you don't want to say stuff like that. You just want to give like a good brief compliment and then, you know, move on with the question that you have. So, you know, the business owner feels a little bit good about himself and then, you know, feels more comfortable with you asking that question. First of all, I think it's been 12 years. Oh, yeah, that's that's another strange part. So on his website, it did say 20 years. I guess his website needs updating. Um, but from what from what he tells me, I think I guess he started his business 12 years ago, but he's been doing, you know, roofing for 20 years. That's what it probably says on the website as well. Um, but it doesn't matter. Um, this is another important fact. You can make mistakes during the discovery call. You know, you don't have to be absolutely perfect. It's just like as long as you quickly fix that mistake and that the last thing you say or the last thing you do is a strong, positive statement. And um, then that business owner is going to get the sense of that being a strong, positive statement and not that like if you made a mistake, something like that. And also, this honestly didn't matter, that the fact that I got this part wrong. On the... Uh, oh. Okay. I have been, uh, I, I've been in the industry for 25. I started okay. with you for Windows. Went on to uh, manage at... Uh Oh, and uh, one more thing is I also asked this question just to get him talking and starting to brag about himself because people love to talk about themselves. People love to brag about themselves because it releases dopamine in the brain. The more you talk about yourself, the more you brag about yourself. This is a great starter question as well because people start to talk about themselves and then, you know, they start to feel good. And, you know, you'll, you'll end up a lot of businesses start talking a long time and then they'll tell you a long story. But, you know, that builds trust and that builds likability as well, which is what we want. Well, I went from Newpro to another regional company. No, I went, sorry, I went from Newpro to Home Depot. Okay. Spent about a decade there. I did very well, but uh, they sold the company. Things changed me. The company that was doing the services for, for, um, for Home Depot sold out. Okay. And things were okay. Things were okay. And note that I'm writing these things down um, just so I can know a background of a history and, you know, you want to be taking good notes of uh, what uh, he's saying. And also just also recording it like what I'm doing here is also great because that way you can always just go back and review the information as well. Okay. For a while, but then they, of course, they wanted to reduce our income. Oh. Um, I, I got out ahead of that, but uh, finished another company and... Right in the recession, things were tough. So when that company could no longer support my salary, my choices were to go get another job as a salesperson, sales manager, or a start then. So that's how I started. I was okay. in the industry and it was time to do it myself. Okay, awesome. So that seems like a very uh, passionate story, just going over and saying, you know what? I'm just going to do it all on my own. I like that. So, so this part is just, I did this for two reasons. One, it shows that I'm actually listening. When it doesn't just say that, like, you know, I'm just asking these questions just because I'm following a script. It shows that I'm actually listening to what he's saying and that, you know, I commend him like, oh, good job. Like, you know, that's a strong achievement and stuff like that. And then I just I don't like harp on it. I don't stay on it. I just move on straight to the to the next question as well. And again, this is like another small compliment. So that way, you know, builds likability, builds trust. So overall, why do your customers choose you instead of another roofing company? Um, so I asked this question because it lets me know if they actually have a competitive advantage and it's just good to know, um, overall if, um, what makes them better and, you know, cause I can use that for when I advertise for them and stuff like that. And also it's another way for them to brag about themselves. <laughs> like what's your, what makes you stand out? 
in your opinion? Well, oh, I say in your opinion as well because um, sometimes the business owner just simply just doesn't know. And, you know, I kind of want to make them think a little bit, but, you know, sometimes if they just don't know, they don't know. So we're confident. We, I'm sorry, did you, say, did you say competent or confident? Competent. Oh, competent, yep. And this is one thing that you should not do. Um, you shouldn't interrupt the business owner as they're talking. Um, so this is like one kind of fault on me. Um, you always want to wait till they're till they completely stop talking, in order to even if it's like to see something to like ask some question like this. You don't want to interfere with the business owner. But again, you know you can make a couple of mistakes in this in discovery calls, and you know it'll all go well as long as the overall call uh, is positive. And uh, we're able to uh, convey that during a during the sales consultation. Well, go. People then choose us for the reason they choose anyone. They choose us because they feel like we're going to do the best job, mm -hmm. um, and we offer them the best value. So whatever our price is, if more than someone else, they think we'll do a better job. Mm -hmm. But if someone else, they think we'll do at least as good a job for less money. Although we're not, we're not low price. So okay, good. Yeah, it's rare that we're going to be the low price on job. Fun cost. That's good because that means you're focusing on the quality rather than the price, which. Like really, really like, which I really like. Right, let's, not worry, let's not worry about me. Let's worry about what you have done. This part right here is so important. This part right here I'm about to do is so vitally important. This is what's going to cause you to not to lose discovery calls, to lose clients. Listen up carefully. If you're on your phone, you're distracted. Listen up. I cannot stress this enough. Okay, I, I understand. I just want to ask you a couple more questions first. It will be short. Just so I know what's the best thing I can actually offer you. Does that sound all right? What? Okay, so how many? Okay, what he just pulled right there was a red herring. Um, if you read Jeb Blunt's, uh, I think he's in Objections or Sales EQ. Um, this is when the business owner kind of just jumps in there and tries to take charge of the conversation. And by just asking you, you know, what do you do? And then like, what's your price and stuff like that. This is usually what a lot of people, a lot of, you know, people who are weak at sales are going to do is they're going to like, they're going to submit to that and actually go ahead and answer his questions without, you know, fully understanding his business, without fully hearing him out and without fully getting all the information that you need in order to make a compelling case. And then once you do that, no matter what answer you give, the business owner is not going to see enough value in you because you, you simply just didn't go through the discovery call, which is meant to build trust and to build value. So when a business owner just goes out of the blue and just asks you something like that, just if they go, if they just feel like, okay, enough about that, what's your price? Literally do what I just did. Just say that I understand that you're concerned about that and that makes complete and honest sense. I need to ask you a few questions so I can make sure I give you the correct answer and tailor my answer towards you. You can say, you know, exactly that word for word or make it, you know, make it sound natural, make it sound, make it sound uh, good. But overall, you don't want to, you know, go, go off a tangent and just let the business owner have all the control in the conversation. Of course, if the business owner keeps asking on, on it and keeps harping on it, then, you know, this, there comes to a point where, you know, you're going to have to answer that question or else you look uh, shady. But, you know, if it's the first time the business owner is doing it, literally do exactly what I did there and it works. This is this could explain a lot of reasons of why your sales call, your discovery calls don't go well or you send them the proposal and they don't say anything back to you. What customers are you getting right now and overall, what's your most popular service? Well... By dollar volume and by by far, mm -hmm. exciting is our number one service. So exciting, okay. By number. I asked this question just because I want to. This is like to see. Okay, where is he at? Oh, okay, a car just honked. <laughs> this is just to see where he is at n now, and then the next questions I'm gonna ask is where he wants to be, and then yeah. Keep going. Well, jobs probably roofing. So I think the jobs are pretty well split between, uh, we probably do roofing and siding at the highest number of jobs. Mm -hmm. And then we do windows slightly less, because we don't advertise windows, so we take what we get there. Which is good, we advertise windows on one farm, but not on the others. Okay. And uh, so that's what it is. So our breakdown is something like 30%. 30%. Usually, you're not going to get 
you know, breakdowns like this. So this is like actually, I really like like this part because usually business owners are gonna like just halt, like either they're just not gonna know at all, or they're just going to like guess or something like that. So this is actually pretty good that he actually knows, you know, the, at least some of the ratios that he's doing or that he's getting with his service. Well, thirty percent siding number of jobs now, mm -hmm. and then uh, oh, say twenty thirty. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> slightly less windows. We do slightly less windows. Okay. And we do, we do some other jobs as well. So we do some, some decks and stairs and stuff of that nature. That makes up less than five yeah. animals. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, how much do you make per customer when you get when they get like a roofing job, for example? Like, what's your uh, overall um, profit margin? So this question I ask because I do for what I do, um, I do like a pay per lead type of thing. So I want to make sure that um, the profit that they get um, per job that they get, um, you know, won't, I'm going to be charging way, way under that. Um, he doesn't give me like a straightforward dollar uh, answer, but he does give me a good answer. And then like, I can like take the, take the, um, take the average price and then use these percentages. Cause he gives me percentages for the most part. So I just ask this question just to be sure like, okay, can he actually afford my services? And you know, this isn't, you don't want to ask questions like, oh, how much do you, how much revenue do you make for the most part? You can ask that question. And you know, sometimes business owners aren't going to, um, you know, get not scared, but like, they're not going to like get defending of themselves. Um, but this is, this is a good question to ask if you want to know like, okay, how much are they making per customer? So then you can know like, okay, can they actually afford my services? customer that you just love going to that you would work with forever and ever so like what's their age their gender yeah, like um don't say forever and ever that kind of sounds weak and you know childish so uh don't say that if you can but you know um mistakes happen um i asked this question just to see it helps me with the when i do facebook targeting of like what uh type of people should i target um for for when i run ads to them and it also gets them like in a, I also say, what's your ideal customer? Like the dream customer who you always want to be working with it makes them think of, oh, I remember the best time I had with this customer and stuff like that. And they start to think about that, even like, even like the littlest of sense. And, you know, it brings them back to good memories, which also builds trust and builds a, a good relationship with you as well. Because, you know, if they're thinking that good thought and you ask and pretty much what, if what you asked made them think of that good thought, it's kind of like the transitive property. So this is like some like very minor psychology stuff that's also in the back, that's happening in the background as well. Um, but I mostly ask this just for like my Facebook targeting and like, can I actually target these people on Facebook? Are they on Facebook in the most part? But there's like a behind the scenes benefit from it as well. Sure, I like a married, a married, a married couple, empty nester, something in the 45 to 65 year old range. 45, 65, okay. And you know, they had kids, but they're gone and left. And she does this? Correct. Okay. Yeah, that'd be the best. Hey, listen, I'd love to see a bunch of retired women, sole homeowners, but you can't make a living looking for them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, this is a good sign if he's like, you know, he's giving me pretty long answers, and you know, he's. Mac, he's like, you know, not like cracking jokes, but like, you know, he's saying other stuff as well. He's engaging with me. Which this is a good sign, you know. If you if they're just if you're just getting short, you know, little answers, that means either a your questions aren't open ended enough, or b the business owner is not really dishing, is not really engaged. 
So you want to keep asking more open-ended questions overall. Try to ask more engaging questions and try to make the questions that you already have more engaging as well. But these questions should pretty much do. So the biggest target market that works for us are empty nests are still working. Mm -hmm. Still working is better than retired. Um, you know, you have 45 to 65. Okay. Um, how many more ideal customers would you want in, within the next two to six months? This is just trying to see, like, okay, um, A, it's, like, kind of getting him to think about, oh, like, okay, how many customers do I want? Like, oh, like, it's trying to make him think of the desires of him wanting to get that customer as well. And also just to see, you know, if I could actually do what he wants. And, like, you know, this is also just to see, okay, how many customers is he looking to get through uh, my marketing skills? I don't know if I'm going to put you guys down incrementally. I'm sure I'd like to get over and above what I'm already doing it. Yes. How many I want total? Uh both answers uh how many how many more would you want so i guess how many more increment with comparison with how many you're getting right now Look, i would like mm -hmm. to develop an additional 12 appointments a week this is a lot of appointments so pretty much i don't say that because <laughs> like during the discovery call because i don't want to seem like oh i can't do that for you for the most part because i know that i can but i haven't got into that volume with a like especially with a roofer because i haven't really worked with this niche so in my proposal i suggested that we start off with you know 15 for the month and then the next month once i actually know what's working we can definitely ramp it up to 12 a week because once i know what's working i can just literally just add more ad spend to it and of course since i do a cost per appointment um in my case um you know the more appointments he wants the, the more money he's going to pay me and also, the more I could spend on ad spend to get him those appointments. That, that would be a good number. An additional 12 appointments a week. Okay. And also, I believe that just because he says 12 appointments a week, it doesn't, want to, it doesn't mean that, like, you know, as soon as I start, he expecting, he's expecting another 12 appointments on the dot right there. Um, most business owners realize that stuff with Facebook or, you know, any social media or any advertising with it for the most part can take time to develop. And they're willing to wait for that time for the most part. How would that overall change and benefit your business? Like, what would you do with the additional money that you got from that? So this question here is just to see, okay, what's your deep desire? So what's like that deep benefit that you that you want? Like, why do you want to do this overall? So that way I can use that kind of to my advantage and, um, you know, be like, okay, and constantly say that over and over. So let's say he wants to... For example, go to vacation to Costa Rica. Um, then I could be like, okay, so I can get you that vacation to Costa Rica by doing X, Y, and Z and all that fun stuff. I'm thinking about building a house in Costa Rica. Oh, building a house in Costa Rica. No, not <laughs> So this actually, this actually fooled me. <laughs> like he, he sounded so convincing. Like, I mean, it's kind of fine that he joked like that, but it's like, I got, I got duped. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. Yeah, and then so sometimes business owners just uh, they just want more money. They just you're gonna hear a lot of them. They just say like, oh, I just want to grow my business. Like that's their deep desire into getting um, more more customers and stuff like that. But you know, it's still a good question to ask. I would always think of asking it. And then most of the time, they're just gonna get like, oh, I just really want to grow my business, expand, and all that stuff. This is actually important because this is his deep, deep, deep desire. The fact that he says he wakes up in the morning and he's like, how can I get more money? This is actually kind of a deep desire for the most part. Um, it is kind of like, it's not really, um, I guess I wouldn't say selfless. But hey, we all, you know, we all have our deep desires. Like, I bet a lot of you guys watching this, including myself, you know, you want to make more money. And you want to think of, okay, what are the different ways I want to make, I can make more money. And, you know, that's not nothing wrong with having that deep desire like that. So, pretty much, I'm going to always use this to my advantage now. So, like, every time I'm talking with him, it's like, okay, if you want to make more money, this is how I do it. And this should lead to you making more money. And that's that transition of, like, where he was now to where he wants to be. You just want to make more money. That's like your main, your main drive. I'm already very happy, so 
Okay, yeah, and then this is like one of the desires of people. It's like if they're already happy, you know, they're just seeking more. Um, it's just one of the desires that people have. You know, they always desire just more and more. You know, they don't want to stop. You know, they want to keep working. They want to keep earning and stuff like that. Okay. And then these questions that I skip here, it's just you know sometimes just really drive it in. But from what I, the vibe I was getting and you know how he was talking. It was just like, I don't need to ask these questions because, again, I don't want to always keep asking the same question over and over and over again. Also, how much are you currently spending on uh, marketing right now to get leads? Um, so this question I need to kind of revamp. It's kind of like asking, like, oh, how much are you spending in revenue and stuff like that? But it's okay because he answers the questions just fine. Um, I should have asked something like, okay, how much are you used to spending to get a lead and turn them into appointments and stuff like that? But overall, at this point, we've already kind of built a relationship. Um, so, you know, it's fine just to ask this question as well. All in, including my staff, that's worth it, 150000 Okay. <laughs> I was just, at this point, I was like, oh, that's a lot of money to be spending on leads. So, I mean, it's... I can, this is when I realized that he, he's kind of a big company. And I actually reached out to him to do a cold call. I got his gatekeeper. And then I actually made this um, email script of like, I asked the gatekeeper for his email. And then I emailed him with the script that I used. And I, I made up with my, on my own. It's pretty much, I compliment the gatekeeper. And then I say, you know, kind of like my spiel that's like on my cold call script. And then I asked him to reply if he's interested. And then he actually replied, being like, you can call me at 2 p.m. T uh, today. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, you guys can get into big companies. So don't be afraid to do that. Although this year it might be more. We'll see. I mean, it varies. Uh, uh, so I just realized this. But, like, the fact he said this is more, that means he's willing to spend on marketing, which is good. This is a really good sign that, you know, he's willing to, you know, invest in himself and, you know, invest in you to get him more uh, quality appointments or leads uh, for what, whatever service you're offering. In fact, I had, I had one source last year that cost me about uh, almost $50,000, which I got very little. Yeesh, $50,000. I'm not going to be charging him that much for the most part, but um, you can see how it can, if I do actually a good job, this can be a really profitable client, like $50,000 on, you know, the marketing aspect of it. And also, besides that point, this just means that he's willing to spend on marketing, but he's been burnt before for the most part. So this is why I kind of like doing the pay-per-lead or pay-per-appointment method, because A, it puts more pressure on you to actually get the results, but if you can get the, if you can get the results, then you don't have anything to worry about. And also, it pretty much takes the risk away from business owners, which... Uh, if you can take as much risk away as possible, you're a lot more likely to get the sale. Okay, awesome. Um, so, you, you, so you spent $50,000 on a marketing company and they weren't consistently getting your customers. Yeah, no. So this is just, I'm just confirming what he said, again, active listening, and kind of just confirming it to myself. Um, and then, then I say something like this. I'm not going to, I wouldn't charge anything absorbent like that. So I say that part because, um, you know, it just makes him more comfortable. It's like, okay, good. This guy's not going to come in here and charge me $50,000. You know, I'm not going to, like, you know, lose money. Because I'm honestly not. Like, I would not charge 50, him $50,000. Um, I No, not right now. Not not yet. Not yet in my agency. And with me, you, you only pay for the results with me. So you wouldn't have to not worry about that at all. Uh, I could have skipped saying that part, but I was. This is at this point. I'm kind of nervous. I'll be a hundred percent honest. Uh, you can kind of hear my voice shake, my voice crack a bit, because I'm usually when I get down to the end of the discovery call, I I do get nervous, <laughs> but it's okay to be nervous a bit as long as you end in confidence. Um. Okay. So you can can you honestly and reliably say that the methods you're doing right now are actually getting me customers? I think we're a growing company. Okay. We'll probably, I think but, you, but you're still... Uh, well, okay. COVID probably hurt us, but we're going we're gonna to shave... We'll do two and a half million this year, I would think. <laughs> you, you can see my face. Like, oh, I, I was like, okay, yeah, two and a half mil. That's a, that's a pity penny. So this is actually a good sign for me because that means he's willing to pay, 
you know, however much I, I charge him for it. Like, honestly, like, I, I think I, my proposal I sent him was, like, for two grand. And, um, you know, if, he, if he's making two and a half million in revenue and I have a results-based guarantee and all that stuff, then, you know, it's not, it's, it's not gonna, it shouldn't be a dent. This is actually really, really good <laughs> in my case. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not anywhere, like, where I want to be, but it's okay. Okay. And this is also great because he wants to be even higher. He's, like, not where it, he wants to be, but, you know, he's, he's looking for more avenues to um, actually, you know, grow his company. And also, one thing you can actually do is if they say, you know, oh, I'm getting a lot of customers and they're trying to be like, oh, do I really need this marketing? You can always say that um, you offer a solution to get them that could get them there faster. Um, or you can say like, you can just think of yourself as a supplement to uh, their marketing strategy and stuff like that. Awesome. Okay. Bottom line is if I can create more quality appointments, I will create more profitable business more quality appointments this is golden because i'm offering him quality appointments and he wants quality appointments and he knows he's confident himself that if he can get those appointments then he can um actually turn that business into profitable business because he most contractors um are confident in their sales skills for the most part so yeah that's pretty good and as a marketer you can only you the most you can get them is to that booked appointment Okay, so with everything, I... Um, I don't know why I just said yep like that. This is, again, the nervousness. I'm not a master at this, guys. Like, you don't have to be, like, a wizard at sales, like the wolf of, the wolf of Wall Street. You know, you could just be, you know, an average an average kid who's scared to death that, you know, <laughs> that's, um, that, you know, you're making a discovery call like this. But, you know, you got to keep pushing. You got to keep uh, moving through. Today, I, I have a solution for you that can definitely help you reach your goals. Can I tell you about them really quickly? All right, so this is when pretty much now, you know, I got in all of his desires, I got in all of his fears, I got in all his goals. This is when I tell him kind of like my pitch and like everything that I offer. So with this client, usually I send a VSL so they have an idea, but this client I didn't since he just pretty much emailed me back that call him that same day at two. Um, so overall, um, this is just my pitch overall. Um, you can say something similar or something different of what you add and yeah. And also, you want to make sure you ask permission to pitch them. Um, although no one likes being pitched for the most part, at this point, it's fine because, you know, you don't want to be like, okay, I can help you. Goodbye. You need to tell them, like, what you do. Like, you need to tell them the bridge that you are going to give them to get them to where they want to be for the most part. And honestly, most business owners don't really care that um, about this talk uh, for the most part. They just it's just to let them know that okay he actually has a plan in mind he's actually doing something you know he's not, or he's not going to do some black hat magic you know to get me appointments and stuff like that he's actually doing a systemized strategy or using a different method to um actually get me clients awesome so i have a proven method using by attracting more to get more roofing appointments and i again sound nervous <laughs> using reputation management and digital advertising as well with the reputation management, I use proprietary software that pretty much asks current and past customers for five-star reviews on multiple platforms. And in essence, it doesn't leave anything less than four stars. And then if they do try to leave something that's less than four stars, you get notified. And that way you can um, handle that situation as well. Um, this is just a software that I, uh, I bought um, that actually does this and kind of automates it. It's actually really nice. Um, but... If you want to offer reputation management as well, you can, it's literally just a matter of just emailing customers, being like, hey, how was your time? And, you know, following up with those customers as well. Especially with contractors like you, a lot of people see your face on an ad or something, and then they go back, they check out your reviews as first. So that's, the, that's one of the things I do. And then th I say that part um, just because, like, okay, this is why my, this service is important to you. Um, you know, you don't want to just say your service and then just dip and then just talk about something else. You want to say, okay, this is, this is my service and this is why it's important and this is how I get you more profitable customers. And I think that can also really help you. And then the next thing I do is digital marketing. So I mainly focus on Facebook ads, but I can do Google ads as well. And I also uh, 
if I realize that maybe there's like another social area that you know people who want roofing jobs are are located at, I learn the ad platform there because overall the marketing fundamentals are the same thing. So, so I say this part because um, a lot of people have tried just Facebook, and you know they say it doesn't work, even though it does work. So I say this part because um, it kind of comforts them being like, okay, I'm going to try multiple different methods and not just stick to one method. Um, because a lot of business, even though if you do know Facebook, a lot of some, sometimes business owners just don't trust Facebook. So the fact that I say like, oh, I can work with other, other digital platforms as well, gives them some comfort knowing that, okay, this guy can actually, you know, spread my name across the web and all that stuff. So I can get you results there as well. And then, like I was saying before, I only do results-based guarantee. So overall, what that means is that you do give, you do pay the money up front, but then if I don't, let's say we, we stick at, you know, 20 appointments for the month, and let's say I can only get you 15. You don't pay for those five appointments, I don't get you. And this is the results-based guarantee that I do. This is what actually um, makes com customers and makes your clients, you know, more comfortable to actually start working with you. Um, so pretty much it's just, it puts a lot more pressure on me, but if it's what gets me the sale and I can actually handle that pressure and do it, which I have been so far, then I actually do it. Um, as you can see here, I don't really follow the script here. Um, this is a, just due to nervousness and B, I do know what I'm, I do know what I'm doing. I do know what I'm talking about. And from what he's saying to me, I can kind of just tailor my pitch to like match what he wants most for the most part. So. Just because you have a script doesn't mean you always have to follow it step by step. You want to, the transitions and like the overall like uh, framework of the script you want to follow, but you don't have to say exactly it word for word. So I give you back that money and then we can go on from there and work something out. So here's what, here's going to be the next step. So I'm going to send you a proposal, which. All right. So pretty much you always want to say, what are the next steps that you're going to do? Um, I kind of don't just stop it at like just my pitch because, you know, I don't, I don't want him just to be like, okay, he pitched me, you know, what else do you want? It kind of puts a lot of pressure on him to actually say something. So I just say, okay, you know, next step I'm going to do is, uh, you know, send you the proposal and all that. And you'll hear the rest of it. It's going to list out everything that I offer and everything that I do and how I can help you get to your goal of at least 12 appointments a week. Yeah, thinking about my proposal now, I didn't, I did not say that, um, twelve appointments for me, because I honestly, since I've never worked with roofers before, I want to not make promises that I really can't keep. So I did something like fifteen appointments per month at first, but then after that, then we can work on getting him twelve appointments a week. Um, so that's just me with a proposal that I did. So don't, just because the customer says like, oh, I want you to do this exuberant amount. Don't always, you don't always have to be like, okay, I'm going to follow that strictly step by step. And, you know, you could say something at first and then, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have another time where you meet with the client and go through the proposal together. And then, you know, if the client can talk about it with you. You can discuss with the client, you know, why you can, you know, why you want to start out slower or something like that. So that way, you know, it's not so much pressure on you in order to actually get the, that appointment. And, um, you know, we can get on another call, we can review that proposal, and then we can go forward from there. Does that sound good? And yeah, so pretty much I just say, okay, I'm gonna send you the proposal, I'm gonna list everything that I do, everything I offer you to get you to the goal that he said, which was 12 appointments per week. That's exactly his what he wanted word for word. So pretty much my proposal is gonna list, pretty much list out the framework of the bridge of, what, of how I can get him to that point. And then I say, sound good. So that way, all he has to say is yes. <laughs> okay. And that is exactly what he did, which is exactly like what I wanted. Awesome. Well, so, you can do that. so with an average job, um, I use... Right, this part I'm doing right here is kind of dangerous. <laughs> for each appointment, it's the price range would be around, around 150 to $200. Would you be okay with that? All right. <laughs> this is all because of nervousness. Um, <laughs> but, um, I just ask him, you know, usually you don't really want to talk about price. Usually that'll just be in the proposal, but it still ended up working pretty fine. Um, you can ask about it if you're risky like me. Um, but cause then it, the thing is, if he said, oh, that's not, then he tells me a bunch of objections and stuff like that. 
And I don't want to deal with objections until, you know, the closing call, the proposal and stuff like that. Until he sees that part. Um, so that's why I kind of just don't mention price. Unless they keep constantly asking, um, I don't usually mention it. Um, but overall, this I kind of made up made up this number because uh, just because I already know how much roofers make in profit for the most part. So I can I say like, okay, 150 to 200 a lead. Uh, should for per, for an appointment, excuse me, should be a good price. But um, note that once I say the price and I say, um, oh, does that sound good for you? Um, I kind of don't want to say, does that sound good for you? It does sound kind of weak, but it works out. You can say it. It's it's fine. It, you have to be. You have to say what you want to say for the most part. You have to be comfortable with what you're saying. Don't exactly match what I say word for word, because then you're not going to sound like yourself. You're going to just sound like a robot. But um. Yeah, you can say it's like, does that sound okay with you? It kind of is coming from a weak position, and it gives him a lot of room to give me objections, which you know it puts kind of him in power, which you kind of don't want at this point. I am on the high end, yes. Okay. Okay, so this is good because he just said, "Yep, I'm good with that price." So what's the benefit of this is that you know he's willing to pay for my services, which is great, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. It all worked out here. This is all a really good sign. This is why I think this is like a really good successful discovery call. Okay, so give me what, give me three days, give me two days, sorry, to send you the proposal, and then we can get another call. Let's make for another call. Let's see, today is Wednesday. All right. So, um, pretty much, I, I'll, I'll talk about it after actually. Um. Would you want to take a call during a Saturday, or would you just want to wait till Monday? Monday, Saturday. Always suggest a date. Don't be like, oh, when are you free? Always suggest, oh, I can do Saturday or Monday. Suggest two things. And then um, then you can just choose a time and then see what works. Monday's better? Okay. Uh, Monday at 2 p.m., is that a good time to call? Also, this was not a good time to call for me because I actually have something at Monday at 2 p.m., so um it, this is again nervousness talking so even though i said 2 p.m i did ask in the proposal if he wants to move it to 1 1 30. um of course he can respond to it and then if it's at two i can i can push things aside to actually do it at two but make sure you actually have a date and time already set in your mind of when you want to talk about the proposal okay awesome i can't wait to help you out louis do you have any more questions for me and always end off with like, okay, I can't wait to help you and ask if he has any more questions because you don't want any looming questions over his mind because he's going to keep thinking about those questions. And then if he keeps thinking about those questions, he's always going to, the business owners is always going to think the worst possible scenario because that's just human nature. And then, you know, that could lead to him, you know, being like, you know what, never mind, not interested. Awesome. This is also a good sign because he's like, okay, I'll have questions for you on Monday, which means he's he's in it and that he's going to, he's, A, he's listening to me, and B, that like he's going to actually go forward with the call on Monday. All right. Talk to you then. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Right, Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And... <laughs> And then you get pumped after, you know, you book a good discovery call. <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, that's the pretty much the breakdown of a successful discovery call. So pretty much I just went through my whole discovery call script. So if you guys want to like copy that, of course, you can always just, you know, pause it, take notes and just write it down and stuff like that. But I will make this available soon. So you don't have to do that. It'll probably be again a part of my one on one SMA uh, help sessions with again, link in the description below for that. So yeah, if you like this video, please, please give it a like. I really enjoy doing breakdown. I really enjoy doing this breakdown video like this. And I want to do more of them. So if this is helpful for you guys, definitely let me know in the comments below. And then, you know, to stay up to date, so you can use the, um, the tactics that I use in these videos now. Be sure to subscribe. Turn the notifications on as well, so you get notified every time I make a new video. Uh, so far, my strategy is Wednesdays and on Saturdays afternoons. So yeah, if you like this video, you're going to like how I actually booked this appointment. And in this video that I have in the upper right, if I book two to five appointments per week for my SMMA, and I can go through discovery calls just like this one. I'll see you guys in that video. Take care.